Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. The fawn in the side for NVIDIA's RTX 40 launch has definitely been RDNA 3. I think there are a lot of folks who are just simply waiting to see what AMD brings to the table with its next generation of graphics cards. That isn't to say that RTX 40 90 in particular has been well received. In fact, it sold out really quickly. I actually tried to buy a card myself yesterday and that didn't go too well. Let me know if you guys had any luck down below. But moving on, RDNA 3, of course, has been hotly anticipated. AMD just recently have doubled down that on the 3rd of November, they are going to be revealing all. But that brings us to today's video, more accurately, some interesting rumors concerning RDNA 3, not only in terms of the release, but also performance targets, and perhaps most intriguing of all, a feature that RTX 40 simply doesn't have. And we're going to get right into it after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So what is this feature that RTX 40 doesn't possess, but Navi 31 does, and I assume some of the lower SKUs as well? Well, it is DisplayPort 2.1. So one issue without question of RTX 40 is the fact that DisplayPort 1.4 is used. It's a little, well, let's say odd that Nvidia did this. And it's a very curious admission considering how forward thinking these cards are. Uh, especially given the 4090 is being pushed in heralded as like, you know, ultra high performance GPU. I'm not going to get too much into the differences between 1.4 and 2, let alone 2.1 in this video. But basically, um, higher, res higher, uh, higher display port numbers, or should I say the newer specification, allows for a combination of higher resolution and more, just perhaps as in more importantly, higher quality bit depth and refresh rates. So this is very important, of course, when dealing with, well, you know, a graphics card, which is really being pushed towards 4K gaming and ultra high refresh, uh, ultra fast refresh rates. And this is very important, of course, because when you consider the RTX 4090 is pushing frame rates of like 120 FPS, especially when you're using DLSS, you don't really want to be using like subpar quality for, you know, color. You want to be using all of that HDR goodness. But anyway, Kyle Bennett has stated on Twitter that according to his information, well, yeah, AMD have actually support for DisplayPort 2.1 in Navi 31. Now, this standard is actually unannounced, and I have to say that I actually did hear personally that DisplayPort 2, I wasn't so sure about the 2.1 part, but I had heard that um, Navi um, 31, um, 32, and I'm not so certain about 33, because there are some differences in the specification. I'm assuming it does support it, but I'm not certain. Uh, but basically, I had heard that it did support this, and I'm working on a really big document at the moment, a video for RDNA 3, but I've had to push it back a couple of times because of new bits of information that keep popping up. And uh, also, to be honest with you guys, I've been helping out um, someone with a flat move the last couple of days, so it's been a little bit nuts. Um, but moving on, though, to perhaps a more concerning bit of news, and this actually is from Enthusiastic Citizen. Now, according to them, and bear in mind, they have been around the block as well. They are not new when it comes to, you know, leaks. They haven't had the best track record, and I want to give you guys the story first, and then I'm going to give my thoughts on it. But basically, according to Enthusiastic Citizen, we're not going to see these GPUs launch until December. Um, basically, their initial target was supposed to be November but it's pushed back until December and according to them the top performance is difficult to compete with the RTX 40 um, 
and they don't think that the price is going to be as confident as Ryzen. Or to put it another way, AMD's performance targets are not as high or they're having issues with the GPU. It's not quite clear. Now, I don't think the, no the December release date is accurate. Grayman on Twitter is stating it's November 20th. Another reason I don't think it's December that we're gonna see a launch is because it would be so much time between announcement and the launch. Plus, also, at that time, like the market you know like people don't tend to buy so much stuff like tech tech launches in and maybe i'm wrong like let me know down below if you can think of any really big tech launches that have happened that late in december perhaps i'm just missing some but yeah i mean i personally don't know about that as for the performance targets that's where things start to get a little murkier there are two trains of thought here. I'm going to go through this fairly briefly because, again, I'm working on a larger script and trying to get some information from a few sources. So I don't want to go too much into this, but there are two trains of thought. The first is that if you look at the number of shaders, which are over 12,000, assuming the leaks are accurate, you look at the amount of T-flops, that is. You look at the leap between Narve 10 to 21. You look at the leap theoretically between 21 and 31, particularly if you're looking at shader scaling. And you also take into consideration the fact that, uh, well, AMD seems to be hitting it quite, but they, they, they seem to be doing pretty well with graphics. They should theoretically hit a performance target of at least two times raster anyway over the highest end Navi 21 SKU. The other way to look at it though is that they are producing a cheaper, much smaller chip, at least in terms of the die and therefore perhaps something is going to suffer. Now I've personally been hearing that Narve 31 hits crazy speeds, like 3 gigahertz plus. Uh, in fact, someone told me like 3.3, 3.5 gigahertz, although I'm not certain if that is like overclocked, in other words, the power limit has gone up. Um, but I do think that we're gonna be seeing at least, you know, the low 3 gigahertz for this thing. It's gonna be really fast. Um, as for ray tracing performance, it gets a little murkier. Um, David Wang, you can uh, do a Google on David Wang uh, RDNA free ray tracing or something like that. And he did um, put out a couple of quotes a while back and he basically insinuated, and we actually did cover it on the channel, and he didn't insinuate that the performance of ray tracing for RDNA free is much better than RDNA 2. Um, he also went on to mention things like, you know, this hybrid, you know, ray tracing approach and it's going to be, you know, a new immersive experience and lots of PR kind of talk. But unfortunately, that doesn't really mean anything, right? Saying much better than RDNA 2, it's like, well, if you're 50% better than RDNA 2, you're probably still not going to be exactly competing with RTX 40, but you are much better. It's a very interesting situation AMD have. And the pricing, of course, is also another thing. I think AMD's strategy is going to be to underprice NVIDIA um, because at the end of the day, like, you know, this is a very obvious thing to say. This is like, well, duh. But if you look at the marketplace, you know, the, the number of cards, the volume of, let's say, 4090s or 4090 Ti's, which gets sold, it's not insubstantial and obviously having a high performance gpu does also win you some other things for example it means that uh, you know you have the fastest product in the market and that's good for pr however in terms of volume um you know having a cheaper product and, and being able to move cheaper products is obviously good as well it's going to be very interesting to see amd's strategy here um again i've been doing a lot of research on rdna3 and i'll put out a video <laughs> hopefully soon i've had to rewrite this thing at least two or three times at this point um because i keep being told different things from different sources i don't want to go too much into that in this video because i don't want to put something out that i've heard and then it could be incorrect so i'm trying to do a little bit more due diligence on this but long story short guys it's going to be a very interesting one. And speaking of things which are very interesting, I just want to mention a couple of things for RTX 40. Yeah, I know technically the cards are out now and everything, so things are a little less exciting. But there are a couple of intriguing things that I think most of you are going to be curious about. The first concerns an RTX 4090 Ti, and this is courtesy of AGF on Twitter. Basically, they state that the best dies are saved for the 4090 Ti, and it's operating at 475 watts with 18,176, 18,000, wow, I cannot speak, 18,000, 
176 CUDA cores, 475 watts with 96 megabytes of L2. That's 24 gigabytes of RAM, of course, and it's up to 20% faster than the 4090. Now, I can say that I've been hearing kind of similar from a few sources. Um, and basically speaking, in terms of the dies, they are basically good to go. Like, NVIDIA could release this thing pretty quickly. However, I don't think they're going to be in a rush. Like, I don't think they're going to launch it this year, the RTX 1492 i I think it's going to be kind of early next year, maybe the first quarter, but maybe they'll save it for a little longer. As for the power consumption, 475, two people actually told me 475, and they also told me it can go up to 530 watts. Uh, obviously, this stuff can essentially be done with a BIOS update, so the, so the boards are actually okay to 530 watts. Um, this is stock, of course. And I don't know exactly what they're going to do. Um, and you might say, well, 475 is much lower than the 600 watts. I, I, you know what, guys? If you look at a lot of the rumors um, for the RTX 40 series, like they've always just been with these ridiculous power consumption figures. And uh, yeah, a lot of the reviewers for the 4090 have said essentially the board just doesn't generally even hit these power levels. The other thing is because not only does it have these additional CUDA cores, you've got all of that extra L2 cache, and that's definitely going to improve performance as well. It's essentially really good for ray tracing, but also, of course, you know, some tasks are just essentially latency sensitive, and, you know, by the time it's farmed um, requests out to the memory and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be interested, to be honest with you guys, on the RTX 4090 Ti. I'm going to be very curious about the pricing. I've heard like low $2,000 is the price target for this thing. And you can kind of guess it anyway by just looking at the price of the RTX 1490 Ti. Sorry, the RTX 1490. The big question is, will NVIDIA cut the price of the 1490? Honestly, this is why we need to just, you know, just be really hopeful that NVIDIA can um, be, you know, can be slapped a little bit by AMD. And now we're going to talk about one final thing, and that is RTX 4080, 4K results, because there are a couple of benchmarks which have actually popped up thanks to NVIDIA themselves. Um, you can see the results on screen, and long story short here, the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte obviously has a much higher specifications than the 12 gigabyte i mean i don't really need to tell you guys that uh, but long story short we're looking at 25 to 30 percent faster the 40 80 16 gigabyte is basically it really is like a different tier of gpu it's like you know i personally one thing i dislike about the rtx 40 uh, launch and i'm sure i'm not telling you guys anything new here but one thing i dislike personally is the fact that NVIDIA did call the card the 4080 12 gigabyte. I personally think it should have been called the 4070. Um, but I think one, I've heard a couple of reasons that NVIDIA have done this, and one of them is to basically provide NVIDIA greater room in terms of naming of SKUs, especially for the lower end. God knows what the RTX 4070's final performance is going to be, but obviously they can also release an RTX 4080, like, you know, TI, which I'm assuming is going to be between the 1490 and 4080, but I reckon it's going to be probably closer to the 1490. But yeah, um, I'm going to be very interested to see how reviewers in particular receive the 4080 12 gigabyte, um, because in some applications and tests, it seems, especially even in video's own results here, it's not exactly that far behind sorry that far in front of a lot of the higher end rtx 30 gpus um so yeah it's going to be an interesting generation for sure with that said hopefully you have enjoyed the video if you did it's youtube you know what to do i'll see you soon take care of yourselves bye for now